Welcome to Chaotic Harmony. My name is John. This is Crystal. I'm Mark. I'm Zoe. We talk about the joys and the challenges of teaching music in the elementary school classroom. We share inspiration. We share struggles. We brainstorm solutions. We would love to have you join us. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Quarantine Episode 6 of the podcast. I know. How crazy is that? Um, so, so far, it's just Jonathan and Zoe here today. Uh, we're hoping that Mark is going to pop in a little bit later, but we are thrilled to also have Lauren Shelton. Hi, Lauren. Yay! Hello, everyone Hi. out there in the podcast universe. <laughs> Those of you that have been with us for a while know that we invoke Lauren's name often on the podcast mm-hmm. because she is our VAPA coordinator, so she's in charge of herding all of the cats in our district, um, all of the art, drama, dance, and music teachers. Um, Lauren is our fearless leader. Um, and Lauren was our very first interview back, I believe, 37 episodes ago. Um, a long wow. time ago. It's been a while. Um, so and it's if, special. It wasn't episode one, but zero. It so was, special. It was the prelude because we realized after we recorded our first couple of episodes that we really needed Lauren to come and tell the backstory about how we came to be in Chula Vista. So I felt it was time for Lauren to come back because, again, we find ourselves in new territory, forging new ground, being pioneers, but in a completely different way. And uh, we've been having so many discussions as a cohort about where we go from here. And I wanted to get her bird's eye view from you know <laughs> the strategies that are being tossed around. So anyway, Lauren, thanks for coming back. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And I am just so proud of the Chaotic Harmony podcast. Um, for what you all have accomplished. 37 episodes, that's amazing. I'm so proud of you all. Aw, thanks, thanks. Lauren. <laughs> uh, we are um, so interested to hear from music teachers all over the country right now about what their um, districts are kind of thinking for next year, or not thinking, um, and uh, and how together or apart they feel when they're putting together a strategy for how they're going to come back to school. Um, and I just feel so fortunate to be where we are to have each other to lean on. And I'm really proud of the direction that we've gone, not only as music teachers, but that the district has this focus on socio-emotional wellness for our students, because that's not something that I'm seeing when I talk to other teachers all over the country. So I am not even sure where to start, Lauren. So if you have an idea, um, uh, for for where we can begin, but I'm thinking like maybe we start by talking about what we've done and then where we go from here. Like, what's the future of music ed? What's the reality? Sure, the reality. Oh man! So uh-huh. obviously, we're in a very weird time. Yep. Globally, um, and you know, even back when schools are getting you know closed for the COVID nineteen pandemic. I was already at home. I, I was actually sick and was self-isolated um, and was already home for a week and a half before we sent everybody home. And so I had some time to process and grieve the fact that I wasn't going back to work. And it was right before spring break. And so I had some time to process, okay, this is, this is going to be something different. And as we pivoted in our district to say, okay, this is not a normal situation, we have thousands of kids, tens of thousands of kids heading home, how can we support them and their families? And so while all of the teachers were just getting sent home and thinking, oh my God, what are we going to do? Like, I have my kids, I've got this, I've got that. I was already home. So I had the the opportunity to say, okay, what can we do to support as a visual performing arts program? And of course, what did you teachers do? You answered the call with grace and action. You you were so quick on how you're like, okay, what do we do? What do we need to do? And our district um, surprises me in more ways than I can ever imagine just because of the focus on how do we help families and students? How do we give them what they need to get through this? And instead of focusing on okay, you're going to log into your computer at 8 a.m. and you're going to have seven classes a day and you're going to do this and do that. We said, you know what? Let's give everybody a little bit of grace and help them just get through this right now. Let's focus on social and emotional well-being because this is not we're working at home because we choose to. We're working at home because we have to. Kids mm-hmm. are at home because they can't be at school. And they're little, they're, they're not little, but 
like, you know, their brains are still developing. They're still trying to navigate emotionally through what this is all about. And we had to, we had to give them some support mechanisms at home. So what do the art teachers do? You all created a friggin' YouTube page to provide students with these wonderful lessons to do at home so they can feel, so they can feel, I think. Mm -hmm. They can feel good, they can feel sad, they can feel scared, but they could feel and it would be okay whatever emotion they had. So I found it so interesting that the idea for that YouTube channel happened right before this you know we were sitting in a restaurant talking about how can we keep advocating for music and the arts when there's talk of shifting budgets and how can we remain um you know in in this position where we get to continue to do the most good for the most kids um uninterrupted and we said well let's start a youtube page and let's highlight the kids and and how it's benefiting them and from that little seed it's just like when this all hit not even a month later we knew immediately where to go. Um, you know, the, yes. it, that's just, it's so incredible to me that, that we were already thinking along those lines and had something to launch with. And even just, I, I'm like getting goosebumps thinking about it because we do know that the arts are something you always have to consistently advocate for because for most people, specifically in our district, classroom teachers and administrators, if they grew up in California, did not receive arts education as part of their school day. Mm -hmm. So if they didn't receive it because their parents advocated for it and paid for it, they don't have any idea because they haven't been personally affected positively by the outcomes of arts education. Mm -hmm. So we were already thinking about that advocacy piece and the arts teachers always answer the call and are really providing that space to say, this is why we're here and this is why we are important. We're an important fixture. We are essential to the health and well-being of all of the students and families in our district. Yeah, so I, I didn't get to be in the recording uh, for the prelude with you, Lauren. And I just want to like take this moment to just say thank you for your time. I don't know how you find time to just make connections with teachers, but I feel so lucky that like you are in your position and I get to work with you uh, because when you were talking about how you were processing um, in that week and a half where you were at home be before, like you had communicated to us in the first like week of us being at home, uh, just like give yourselves that moment you told you reassured us like it's okay to just feel it all and it like looking back on it yeah we did like spring to start doing a lot of things but I don't think I would have been able to do that without like validation and like the moment to so thank you mm -hmm. thank you Zoe um like I, I always think that everything happens for a reason and we all did need to take some time to grieve and grieve that our old life as we knew it was changing and that we had to take that moment to adapt and to really realize, okay, this is something new. It's something different. We're going to be out of our comfort zone yet again. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to give, our, give ourselves time to feel, to allow ourselves to have those good moments those bad moments, those moments where we're like, okay, these four walls are getting too small. I need to go and hide under my covers for a couple of hours and watch, you know, Tiger King. I think I even put that in the email. Like if you need time, <laughs> take it um, mm -hmm. because we're going to be necessary for people, but we have to take care of ourselves. I always mm -hmm. think about um, us, you know, when, whenever I go on a plane, it's like, okay, put your mask on first then do it for people around you. And that's so true because if you give too much when you haven't given yourself anything, you burn out and it's not, it's not good. It's that sustainability for yourself. Um, I think about you all, all the time um, because I know that everybody has their own different situations at home. And so I even think about that in terms of kids, in terms of families, everybody is going through something different. They might portray it differently when they're on a Zoom call or when they're emailing. But um, giving each other that grace is so important right now. Um, and you all have done such an exceptional job at letting me know, hey, I have to step back. I say, you know what? Do it. Step back. Take the time that you need. We're here when you're ready to come back to us. 
And I think that's the beauty um, of building relationships with all of the teachers. It takes time, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm so proud to know all of you and work with all of you. I think that's the beauty of doing things together, too. It's like, okay, so you're overwhelmed because you were supposed to be just coming back from, you know, I'm talking, I'm thinking of my art teacher. Like, she was supposed to come back from maternity leave when this happened. And so she's got a three-year-old and a three-month-old, and and then this happens. And oh my goodness, where how how can we expect? I mean, she's done a phenomenal job of putting amazing, high quality content out there. But you know what we are able to give as parents looks a lot different than a teacher who doesn't right now in this time. We just have different priorities, and it's been so nice to um, to hear from our principal and from you and f- from the district, just like. Our top priority is the the wellness, the socio-emotional wellness of our students and our staff first. We can't, I keep going back to that, um, the mask on the airplane. We have to take care of ourselves and we have to be able to understand that that's the most important part because we, we know, like even one of our other art teachers was supposed to come back from maternity leave too, and she has twin mm-hmm. babies at home. You know, that <sighs> schedule is very different than going back to work and being separate, you know, going away from the kids, having somebody else. (laughs) Yeah. The childcare (laughs) aspect. Um, but you know what? I, I just have to say, I love our Thursday meetings the most. All of my discipline meetings are on Thursdays and I welcome when kids come into the picture or when they show the babies that it was, we've, I think we had six or seven. You always freak out a little bit. (laughs) Oh, I don't care. I love it. We're, We're, this is, this is a whole new situation. We're at home. Yeah. Our kids are at home with us. Our families are there with us. It's mm-hmm. it's life, and we can't push everybody out. This is this is just what it is. Um, but I love it when the kids come in. One of our dance teachers has a three year old, and she came on, and the mom was you know the, the teacher was just so nervous. I said, "Let's all say hello to Penelope. Let's all say hello." And so everybody says hello, and the smile on her face. And then she went away. You know, she just went on mm-hmm. and did something else. We have to acknowledge that this is different, and it's okay. I, I welcome it all the time. I love it when I get to see all the babies and all the kids in our meetings. And I think that helps everybody else in the group realize that everybody is dealing with something different. And if somebody isn't responding right away, that's probably because they're trying to feed two babies or trying to get their children to do their distance learning. You know, it's yeah. gives us I, that reality check. I think it's also interesting during this time of COVID, it really focuses on what our philosophy of music is all about or the arts in general. Like we're teaching kids. We're not teaching like, like, well, standards are important. Don't get me wrong. But like in in the end, we are teaching kids. We are teaching how to grow them as, uh, as emotional and well, full X, Y, and Z child. And that's what we should be doing. But if anything, this whole pandemic's helped us, I guess, rehone in on that, which has been nice. And uh, one of our coordinators at the district office, he has two children in band with Andrea at Hilltop. Mm. And Andrea right away was like, okay, I got to get in front of my kids. I got to get them to keep playing, right? Um, And so he would send me videos of them connecting with Andrea and playing their recorders or playing their flutes in one-on-one lessons. And he told me, he said, I don't know how they would have gone through the transition without being able to play their instrument and to stay connected to their music class because that's what makes them want to go to school. And it's beautiful the fact that the arts are providing that space for students to create and to connect with their instrument and to stay. You know, we, we always hear about kids, and John, John, you did such a great job um, with the videos pre-COVID um, of students sharing their experiences of what the arts have done for them, and specifically music at your site. And it provides them that space to emotionally connect and to release emotions when they're feeling something. I want to share something um, that Dave Thaxton shared with me last week um, that I've been thinking about ever, ever since. Um, it's a quote by Liz Kilpatrick. Um, He said, um, he said, a novice teacher believes that they are teaching content. A veteran teacher believes that they are teaching children, but a master teacher understands that they are teaching themselves. Mm. And oh my goodness, I think this, this last nine weeks has made me go in 
in a way that I never have been forced to before and face my stuff um, and removed all of that external validation, it's not available right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what what is it that we do next? And the only voice I have to listen to is my own in answer. And I what, think we have to use that as our guide. What can we do? What do we feel is our next step in this? Um, because it's going to look different for everybody. And that's perfectly okay. Um, the, the future of music and arts education is unclear at this point. We're still trying to navigate through what it would look like. We don't know how we're going to return to school next year. Is it going to be a distance learning only model? Is it going to be blended? And how can we as educators and leaders adapt to that and understand that, okay, we might not be able to have, or we won't be able to have choir in the way that we had it before. We Mm -hmm. won't be able to have band the way we had it before. But are the instruments the only things that are connecting kids to you, to the work? So thinking about different ways that we can explore arts education moving forward, um, it's still something that we're all developing and we talk about on a regular basis, but it's such a weird unknown, but we just have to have confidence in ourselves that it's going to be okay, whatever happens. Um, and and we might have some failed attempts at something that we try, but you know, it's, it's a, it's whole new territory. It's time to reimagine. I, I keep thinking, and I shared this with you yesterday, Lauren, you know, what the program that I built that I spent the last five years building, I do not have to go back to. There is no going back. There will be a possible returning and rebuilding, um, or there will be a reimagining and a rebirthing in a completely different way. But what I left is no longer there to go back to. Um, yeah. And, and that's the hardest part. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. And there's a grief there. But I also think about this time as kind of our cocoon where we're, we're going in and I don't know what, what is going to come of it, but I believe, I believe that we have a lot to hope for and I believe that innovation is coming. I, I love um, Dr. Cereza is our assistant superintendent of curriculum instruction and she leads our distance learning team that I am on at our district office. And From the beginning, from the onset of us being at home, she said, look, education is not going to be the same. It's not, we're not going to go back to the way it was. This is our opportunity to turn things on its head, to evaluate what's the most important part of education, what's working, what isn't, and what we can do differently. And we've been discussing that every single week in our meetings. What are the possibilities? What can we do differently? When we go back, it's not a going back. It's a going forward. And we have to be understanding that we're going forward and we can bring along what we want, but it has to be something different and we have to keep focus on the children and educating them. But it's it's different now. That's okay. It's time for to innovate. And what are we really good at? We're good at creativity and innovation, right? Improvisation, at least. (laughs) Improvisation, making things work when you don't know what the outcome is going to be, but you try it Mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. I I think about, uh, we had a chat with Victoria Bowler, a friend of ours who was part of the ORF uh, training with us, and really honing in on the idea of what is your philosophy of of teaching? And like, if that is gold, then it will transfer no matter what kind of circumstance we're in. And it, I mean, I brought this up last to podcast. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to bring this up for a several because it's so important. If I, and it, this time is really important for us to reevaluate what is our philosophy? What do we believe as teachers is important? And I, I think about a lot of traditional approaches which have their say, but like, unfortunately, like if you stick with just that st- uh, students need to be able to perform uh, for the winter music concert, that's what it means to be a music teacher. They have to perform for the spring music concert down. Got those checked off. If that's your philosophy of what it means to be a good music educator, then that has to be reevaluated. And I hope that we all, as all educators of all arts, reevaluate what it means to be a that so teacher. Oh, I. Uh, hey, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Awesome. Um, so Zoe was part of the program where I taught, and I tell the teachers every year at the beginning of the year, you, you and you, you write your teaching philosophy. Rewrite it at the end of the year. 
evaluate it after you've had an entire year of teaching and see if that, that's still your philosophy. Because when you're new, you think you have that performance. Performance is the end game for everything, right? Because that's what you've been taught. But once you get through teaching your first year, it's, wow, I don't really think performance is that important. That might be my administrator's perspective, but it's not my personal philosophy. And so I might challenge all of the arts teachers over the summer to reinvent what their teaching philosophy is in this new time, because mine has obviously changed. My leadership approach has changed. Um, So I think that it might behoove everybody out there to take the summer break to really get back and go into themselves, like Crystal was saying, mm-hmm. um, and, and really reevaluate what your end game is. What, what do you want out of your teaching? What do you want as your teaching philosophy? Oh, gosh. Okay, that's next week's podcast, guys. Everybody do your homework. <laughs> I've got some ideas. I'm glad I came in when I did. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. That's good stuff. I And I keep coming back to you and telling, I've shared with all of you guys this week, I believe that the work that we have ahead of us next year is twofold. I think, you know, we know that the kids are going to be behind academically. We've now lost an entire quarter face to face. We don't know what going back to school is going to look like. So we have academic ground to make up. And we also have some trauma that we're going to be dealing with. We talked about that last week. I loved that Noelle shared with us that the research indicates that the more trauma a person has experienced, the more capacity for growth they have. And that is incredible to me. So our work is going to be to be facilitating healing and it's going to be um, it's going to be teaming up with classroom teachers and helping them do the work to make up, you know, through integration um, as much as possible. I think that we, the kids won't be as far behind as we think academically. Because if you remember, fourth quarter, there's a lot of testing. And like, yes, they will be behind, but it's not, I don't think it'll be as far as like we're, we're thinking it could be. I would definitely agree with that. Um, before spring break, most classroom teachers have hit their marks, their benchmarks on the standards that they wanted to teach for the year. Obviously, every school and teacher and classroom is different. My thinking is that how are we going to support them in being able to receive the learning when they come back? Because as we, I don't know if you have all have read Bruce Perry's book, The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog, but when yes. students are in that fight or flight like situation their brain literally shuts down and they cannot learn their brain stops and so how can we as the music teachers the dance teachers art and theater lower their levels of cortisol when they come onto campus and allow that space to open up for them to learn in the classroom again is it through a song that is integrated to the content that they're learning in their classroom so they then go back to their classroom excited to learn that concept that their teacher is going to teach them? Is it a dance that they're going to be explaining um, the meaning of a vocabulary words so when they go back to the classroom, they're ready to learn and they're excited and engaged. We have to use our arts momentum to give the children that chance and that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Mark is in the middle of helping interview for a new principal for his school. So that's why he was Very able to pop exciting. in. Yes. Lauren, that was exactly the question that I wanted to ask you along the lines of empowering students to move forward and move through uh, this experience and whatever they will be experiencing in the future. And I'm also thinking, because I've been following on social media, like, People from other parts of the state and the country are looking to you and what we're doing. And I wanted to ask you, like, from a leadership perspective, how can we, like, empower each other as teachers on that level? And then so that, like, we can also empower students to do that work. Oh, I think... I think we have to be able to experiment and be okay when things don't work out in our favor because that, by giving us the opportunity to to test things out and it not work and be okay with that, that gives the kids the opportunity to feel that same way because they're going to be coming to school either online or a blended situation. So when they're on campus, 
they're going to have a, a heightened level of anxiety and they're probably going to not want to do something wrong. They've got masks on. They need to stand at six feet apart from each other. They want all the, We need to show them that trying new things and failing is okay and leading by example in that way. Um, and I think as leaders too, we have to say, you know what? That didn't work or, you know what, I apologize for... Um, you know, having you guys try this out and I, I think I thought it was going to work and it didn't, but let's try something different and be okay as a leader to say, wow, I don't know how to do this. Yeah. Let's try it together. And I think that that's what the kids are going to need. They're going to need to know that it's okay to try and fail as a team. Okay. That was something that came up. Uh, we've been doing VAPA show and tells for Finney and, um, it was interesting uh, when some kids showed off artwork that they'd done, that was really great couple kids left the meeting um, and just letting everyone know, you know, if you feel comfortable sharing, we want you to share whatever you've done is perfect and we're happy that you're doing it. Um, and, you know, we're not there in person to create that culture. So any chance that we do have face to face, like putting aside content for a minute to to build culture is so important and build trust, especially with our kids that we're going to get next year that we haven't gotten to know yet. There's something that I was talking to my theater teachers about in the fact that, okay, what kind of videos can we prepare for the summer that have you in a mask that show how Mm. do we, how, what new ways can we greet each other with not being able to physically contact each other? Or how do you show your emotions when half of your face is covered? So Mm -hmm. what are some different ways that we can use gestures, voice, um, body movements. I, you know, I use my eyebrows all the time. How can we get mm-hmm. our students to know that it's going to, it's going to be okay. Right. Um, so that's the challenge that I'm giving my theater teachers to get students prepared to, it's okay that it's going to be new and different and here's how it could look and get them ready for that before they even step on campus. An art project to make your own mask that you're proud of that expresses your personality. Right. Mm-hmm. There you go. Interesting. Ooh, the wheels are spinning now. Yes, they are. That's good <laughs> I know, stuff. I saw John start to go like this. I'm like, I see a couple of videos uh, in John John's live right now. <laughs> At least ideas are jot down, if not videos. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh-huh. It's the express yourself ostinato. It, right. Interesting. Everything. Mm-hmm. There's so many different ways that um, we can be that leverage point for students to start to feel comfortable again at school. Because yeah. when you think about the classroom teacher, they've got so much pressure in, that they're probably putting on themselves and that they feel that they have to put on themselves mm-hmm. to catch kids up or to prepare kids to learn. Um, but we can help them by getting the kids ready and getting the kids integrated back into the school setting. Yeah. All right. So to recap, we talked about giving ourselves grace we talked about taking care remember. of yourself first. That's right. Thank you. Making sure you take care of yourself first so you can take care of others. So I'm hearing that it sounds like we need to begin from the place that nobody has all the right answers right now. And that's that's just how and it that's is. Okay. I, I, that's okay. Yeah, in our Thursday meetings when people ask me questions, I say, you know, I'm going to be saying I don't know a lot. And that's going to, you know, because I, I don't know and I don't want to pretend like I know the answers. I don't feel like that's going to help anybody at this time because I think we have to work together to find solutions. And um, Mary Lauritsen always says at NAM, um, she always says, you know, if you, if you aren't at the table, you become the meal. Mm-hmm. And us as, you know, the VAP of team i've pushed us in to the table and i'm bringing the wine so we can help create that meal right the meal might taste right. really gross at first and we might have to go back to the kitchen a couple of times to revise it but at least we're part of the team that's creating that meal mm-hmm. can i ask you have you thought about if you had a wish or something that could ideally come out of this time have, have you been able to dream a little bit I have. I, my wish is that this time really helps solidify that the arts are essential to human flourishing. That people start to understand we don't do this because we think it's fun. We do this because it changes lives and it gives students the opportunity and us. Like I was having a rough day, so I got out my sketch pad and my colored pencils and just took a moment to create. But, and we're also able, and my wish is also that we're able to introduce the arts to people 
who haven't ever experienced before. So maybe parents who are seeing their kids do a dance on one of our YouTube videos and joins in with their child so that they get to create together at home. And then I guess my other wish is that we all come out of this stronger than we ever imagined ourselves to be. Um, that the strength together as a team, we look to each other when one of us is starting to fall, we all come around them and lift them back up. And I think that uh, we're well on our way with that. I have three wishes. Thank you. I those are those. all beautiful. Yes. Well, Lauren, thank you so much. I just I appreciate your leadership and your perspective and your calm and also your fire. <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's really funny. Um, I know that people look at me like, oh, yeah, she's like nice. She has freckles. She, you know, she's, she's oh, no. not intimidating <laughs> at all. And I know I need to be a bulldog at times. And I will be because I know what you all do and what you all have built and fought for is important. And as a leader, I take that risk to you know, elbow my way in or bulldoze my way in. Um, but it's important. It's important as a leader to hold that conviction and, and what you know and, and have the back of your teachers. And I hope you, you all feel that because I'll go to bat for you all anytime and every time. Yes. Thank you, Lauren. What's going to be today, right? Let's do right. Let's do a hard right turn today. Uh, this has been an amazing year. We've worked on, when was our first episode? Like, you st- like over a year, a year ago, ago, right? Yeah, we released yeah. it with the first week of school in July. We're- that's right. And mm-hmm. along the lines, we've had so many people join us. We've had different guests and we've had also people from across the nation, supposedly across the world as well, being listening to us. And we really appreciate it. Um, and the way that this community grows even more is if you go to your podcast app, please make sure you go to iTunes and send us a review. Uh, one star, five stars, preferably five stars. That's the only right answer. But send a review nonetheless so that people can see and more people can join our community and whatnot. Also, if you have any questions, please email us at chaoticharmony at gmail. No, I'm sorry. Chaoticharmonyclassroom at gmail.com. I want to take a quick break and thank my husband, Brian, who's been working behind the scenes producing these episodes every week on all of the platforms and on time. But you need to know that he is first a financial planner for Mission Trails Financial. Mission Trails Financial is a partner that seeks to guide clients in the journey to financial success. They believe that people need a financial advisor that aims to provide strategies for success. Mission Trails Financial helps people navigate investments, tax planning, and insurance. Imagine working with an advisor who isn't tied to specific brands. Mission Trails Financial has a fiduciary responsibility to act in the best interests of their clients by providing independent, objective advice. Their mission is to help clients accomplish their financial goals. As Joe Vitale once said, a goal should scare you a little and excite you a lot. Do yourself a favor and set up a time to chat with Mission Trails Financial. Visit www.missiontrailsfinancial.com or call 619-419-0238 to schedule a call. You'll be glad you did. We believe that leaning on professionals is how we get ahead. Check out the program notes for more information. Uh, here's my idea. So I rescued this from my classroom because I took all the soft things out first. My parents are quilters. Uh, my mom pieces and my dad does top stitching so this is dad's quilt wow oh that's beautiful cool. it's really fun and the stitching has all of these hidden designs in it so my boys love to look at the mm. back of their quilts um, because my dad hides pictures in the stitching um so this one is cat themed and there's cat paw prints and there's oh, there's just cool. little there's hidden kitties all over it but i was looking at it and i was thinking about um jonathan i was thinking about your video about my bed is a boat um and i was like what do you think we could do with a blanket because all the kids are making forts right now so what could we do for a music class video for a lesson that has to do with a blanket and go Whew. that's something that everybody has in their house I was thinking of doing an imagination exercise. So um, put on a piece of music and maybe give them a choice of some different classical pieces of music and then use your blanket as your costume. Like, what is this about? Are you a a king or a queen? Are you a superhero? Um, Are you camping? That was my idea. um, Oh, no. Is to have them put their blanket on as a cape and find music that their superhero would use when they came on the scene to rescue whomever. So they'd have to 
listen to all types of music that they relate to that would be their their hero theme I like it. So it's a, it's a twist on it. So they're picking their own superhero music in your scenario. Mine is yep. an interpretation. I like that. Uh, I've been into like sliding, uh, mostly with my socks inside. That's been my go-to uh, break. <laughs> that sounds fun. And I wonder if in a safe way, students could also slide on a blanket. Um, blanket. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah. ice skating in their house. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I think I here's like, our next cross-disciplinary VAPA channel video. Oh, definitely. That'd there be great. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about the, the tension that one has. And you have your, your foot on the blank and you pull on the other end. Mm. And just kind of, I don't know, I feel like all my spiccato goes back to movement. <laughs> but uh, yeah, having a child listen to music and see how they can interpret it based off of them ebbing and flowing with the blanket on top of them. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. All right. All these are awesome. Excellent. Okay. Um, This week for our quarantine song of the week, I tap Jonathan. Quarantine Quarantine song 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 of the week. What do you have to share with us this week? Well, might as well... uh... Since you referenced that as your spiccato, why not marry the two? I'll, we can, okay. I, we'll have uh, My Bed is a Boat. My Bed is I'll a Boat. This. Coming up next, Jonathan, My Bed is a Boat. Has this ever happened to you? It's time for sleep. Your parents close the door. They turn off the lights. You get all comfy in your bed, and suddenly, your bed turns into a boat. And your room isn't your room anymore. And your bed takes you to far distant lands. You are not alone. I used to do that too. Sometimes I still do that, even at the age of 29. Sometimes. But I have a song today just about that. Hi, hi, Mr. Seligman here, and welcome to the Music Room. So today, I have a song for us called My Bed is a Boat. And it's originally a poem that was turned into music. The poem was written by a famous English writer named Robert Louis Stevenson the same guy who wrote the book Treasure Planet. And the poem is about our bed when we go to sleep, taking us to wherever our imagination takes us. The first time I sing this, I just want you to listen to it so you can soak it all in. Sounds good? Mm. I have a lot.
lot of memories with that song. So this is a longer song, and today I don't want us to focus on learning how to sing it, but if you do want to learn, you are more than welcome to it at the end to click on the timestamp below so you can just hear that song and just go over it again and again. That's why I left the words also in the video. Instead, remind me, where are we in the song? What's the setting of the story? Are we in space? Are we in a desert? Or are we on a boat? We're on, we're on a boat, yes. We're on a boat in the ocean. So what kind of sounds would you hear if you were on a boat in the ocean? Close your eyes. Imagine. What would you hear on a boat in the middle of the ocean? Maybe you'd hear waves hitting your boat. And up and down. Maybe you might hear the wind hitting the sails. Maybe you might hear the wind just going whistling by itself. Things on the boat paddling around. You can open your eyes now. Today, we are going to create a soundscape. A soundscape is where you can create different sound effects to create the setting that we're trying to create. In this case, us being on a boat. Now, the great thing is, you don't need anything complicated to make an amazing soundscape. In fact, I found a few things lying around my house that can create really cool sound effects for the ocean. For example, I have this huge blanket that can create a really cool sound effect for wind hitting the large sails. I also have a bunch of ornaments still lying around because, well, Christmas cleanup is not quite done yet here. But what kind of sound do you think this will make? Maybe that's the rattling of things in your boat. Perhaps a slice of wedding cake. Well, maybe not the wedding cake, because that doesn't make this kind of sound, but maybe it's the plates jiggling and jangling around in the boat when the waves go up and down. I also have this milk jug. Hmm. Maybe this can make the waves hitting the boat. Now even better, you don't even need household items to create sound effects. You have your body. For example, we can create a really cool wind effect with just blowing our air. But actually, if we have our hands cover different parts of our mouth, we can create different kind of air effects. Now, in just a second, I'm going to ask you to pause the video. N not yet, though. No, not yet. I'm going to ask you, though, just a bit. I'm going to, I want you to go into your house and find something to add to this ocean boat soundscape. Maybe it's something that we've already used. Maybe it's a blanket. Or maybe it's a milk jug. Or maybe it's something entirely new. It's up to you. I want you to experiment. Think about what you'd hear on the ocean on a boat. Now, the key thing is to make sure two things. One, ask permission first before you use it. And two, always be safe, guys. Okay, now go pause the video, find something, bring it back, and we'll continue the video from there. Great, now I'm going to sing the song one more time, but I'm going to add two new instruments to help the song sound a little more fun. The bass xylophone and the recorder. But the rest of the sound effects are all stuff that we found around our house or on our own body. And I want you to join me. Sounds good? Let's go try it out.
house of wedding cake Perhaps a toy or two All night across the dark we steer But when the day returns at That was phenomenal. Awesome job, guys. Now, if you can, what I'd love you to do is send an email down to the email below. Send me an email, what did you do to create your soundscape? Or maybe you could take a picture of it, or a video. Your call. Now, I had a really fun time, and I hope you did too. I will see you soon. But until next time, I hope you experiment, you explore, and you have amazing adventures on your boat. All right. Thanks so much, you guys, for listening. Lauren, if people want to reach out to you, if they have questions um, or they just want to talk to you because you're awesome, where can they find you? You can always find me on my Twitter account, which is our, um, at VAPA underscore CVESD. And also check out our um, new VAPA website, VAPACVESD.com. Um, and I'll make sure to add a little contact us button there. So if you need to get, a, uh, get in touch with us, that you can do that there. Awesome. And Jonathan? You can find me on the Twitters and also the Instagrams at Mr. Seligman, M-R-S-E-L-I-G-M-A-N, as well as the YouTube account, youtube.com slash Mr. Seligman. And Zoe? You can find me on Twitter at Ms. Kumagai, and I have some YouTube videos at Rosebank Panther Music. Yes, you do. Ooh. You can find me and all of my school stuff at Finny Vapa. Um, you can find me on Instagram and uh, as Mrs. Pridmore and YouTube as Crystal Pridmore and all my stuff at crystalpridmore.com. And Jonathan, where can they find all of us? You can find all of us uh, using the, the, the handle at CH Classroom. That's going to be applicable to Twitter, to Facebook, to I think everything except for Instagram. the YouTube accounts. Mm -hmm. Yes, in, uh, Instagram as well as CH Classroom as well. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube's going to be a little different. It's Chaotic Harmon Classroom. So find there us there. Go. Yep, find us there. Like and share. Thanks for listening, you guys. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. The Chaotic Harmony Podcast is a joint project between Crystal Pridmore, Jonathan Seligman, Zoe Kumagai, and Mark Kemer. You can find us online at chaoticharmonyclassroom.com. You can email us at chaoticharmonyclassroom at gmail and let us know what you think. Give us feedback about what you would like to hear in future episodes. We're on all the socials. Find us on facebook.com slash chaoticharmonyclassroom. You can find us on Twitter at chclassroom, Instagram at chaoticharmonyclassroom, and you can even find our episodes on YouTube. Chaotic Harmony is the name of our channel. Special thanks to Brian Pridmore for his help with production and equipment. www.pridmoria.com Oh, you have your book? Is it your jazz oh, anthology shit, that's what again? It was. it was my it was the book. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, I can drink more coffee. Yeah. I found drink that coffee, in quarantine coffee drinking happens at any time during the yeah. day because there is no schedule. There is no sleep schedule, there's no nothing. I'm chewing so many packs of gum to try not to eat too much. I'm up to like three packs a day. <laughs> I just have caffeine on drip. Let's direct right in here. So. Right here. <laughs> I got I got my gum right go. behind me. There Joyce. you go. <laughs> How would you just feel if I ate on the podcast? Would you guys be fine if I just like crinkle stuff? Nope. Yeah. Oh, please. No. Yeah. No, that would be a paper. great idea.